Greetings and welcome to the Badger Caves West Wing, where our stealthy pole cats ferret out the best feels, funnies, and what the fucks to discuss slam bam badger style. Your Sydney West hosts for this evening are myself, Supreme Doge in Charge, our pole cat punster Hannah, Anna, my humps, my humps, my lovely lady lumps, Cherry, Dr. Ranabrakam, Panda at Large, and probably really quiet today, Max Derrett, Simpsonskin, not Chinese stereotype, and our anchorilla, Scott. This evening, we'll be covering the following topics. Jilted girlfriend goes full children of the corn on a man's cob because he decided not to marry her. That ought to change his mind. A new Lyft and Uber life service is starting up. Just for women. Also, a missed opportunity to call it vulvar or maybe motorist. Trolls lay the bait following the tragedy at the Quebec mosque shooting and Daily Beast lunges at it like a starved rat. A gang of hood rats, speaking of rats, serve hard time for a sex attack on an amateur footballer. The case of professional e-celeb victims versus Gamergate has come to a close via the FBI. The verdict? Stay tuned to find out. And the lynching and murder of Emmett Till was based on a lie, as it turns out, and the real cost of false accusations will be the subject. And finally, for our patron-only after show, the bonus story. Vanessa DeLarge, actress and sex blogger, writes an open letter to men everywhere, and it's an apology? If you want to enjoy further personalized discussion with the Badgers on select topics, such as this story that I'm talking about, the apology, please consider becoming a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash honeybadgerradio. And now it is time to give the first story to Maximilian to tell us about whatever the, the well something that i find a very sensitive subject let's put it that way yeah Thanks. it's yeah this was kind of terrible to get through so today ladies and gentlemen <clears throat> i'm just going to warn you we have a story that is so horrific that it will your soul hopefully by warning you of this beforehand you won't max <clears throat> last week max. oh can you hear me uh, you, you seem to be cutting in and out. Does anybody else get that, or is it just me? No, he is. Yes. Oh, okay. oh shit. Um, Somebody else want to read it? Uh, yeah, well, go ahead and try again. Let's see if it, because it seems to be fine now. Okay. So, <clears throat> start all over again. Today we have a story that is so horrific that it will penetrate your soul, at least in my opinion. And hopefully by warning you of this beforehand, you won't take it so hard. Oh. So this past week, an Indian man got shafted when his jilted lover sliced off his manhood with a sickle. After doing the deed, she ran down the street with it. Planned to stop him sleeping with another woman because she was so pissed. She enticed him, lured him to her home for sex, blindfolded him, and thought that maybe her sickle would come in handy. Oh. His parents came upon him by accident and helped him to the hospital. He would have driven on his own if he weren't a complete working stiff. Surprisingly, the man wanted to keep his mother in the dark and thus invented a fallacy to be married to another woman, so he said that he cut it off himself in order to not insult the seminal caste system that his family members embraced. I feel bad for this man, particularly because he has to hang around two nuts every day of his life. But putting aside all jokes, we have to recognize that there is a vast difference between this man's culture and our culture. And different expectations regarding masculinity may rub us the wrong way. But it could be fatal for others. Luckily, the man is expected to survive, and the woman is being charged with attempted murder. Max, I expect this kind of thing from Hannah, but Jesus, man. <laughs> Penis. I mean, good to <laughs> now. How do you feel? I can't believe you fucking worked that I assure you, I did not dictate this. any of that to him. Oh, God. <laughs> God. You guys. Damn. You people. You're there, horrible. There, there, is, hey. there, there is no end to our depravity. What do you mean, you people? <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, shades of Lorena Bobbitt. Uh, you know, like, not does just... this thing have to happen every so many years or something? I, this is, like, not... Have we not figured it out yet that crazy women do horribly insane things to people like that? Um, yeah, probably not, because nobody talks about this, and when they do, it's a joke. Because somehow cutting off a man's penis is a punchline 
but even grabbing, talking about grabbing someone by the pussy is national fucking scandal. Yep. I'm so mad about this. I'm literally boiling inside right now. I should probably not talk because I'm going to be very, very angry. This makes me, I'm like shaking right now, seriously. <laughs> This is graveyard humor, honestly. It's one of those things that it would be we... fine. If, it would be fine if it was graveyard humor that was applied equally. Yeah. The thing yeah, is, yeah, it's that not applied equally. Is but if we uh... objectification of men, utter, utter removal of their agency or feelings or experience as fucking human beings. It's turned into a joke. While for women, we walk on eggshells just at the thoughts of upsetting them or misgendering their non-binary pronouns. Are you fucking kidding me? I'm so angry now. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be quiet for a minute. Uh, we have to find a, a, a middle to this where we can acknowledge both sexes, you know, when they're, when they're victimized in a way like this. Although, to be honest, I don't think there's an equivalent for women with this. You know, like feminists always say that uh, that uh, female g genital mutilation, where the clitoris is cut off, is is the equivalent, but it's really not. Because your urethra does not go through your clitoris. Um, feminists aren't all that good at biology, though. Also, but in any case, you're, you're not. You know, like that's one thing about like you know they're cutting yeah, off just the balls. They're cutting off just the dick. But like it, people don't understand basic biology. That yeah, there is a reason men are super tied into their penis and they're like have a thing about right, right. yeah because biologically it is a way that tells our animal that we're gonna survive. We're gonna live. We're not gonna die right now. It's okay. So it calms that basic fear. Women have it too, and it has to do with seeking a community or seeking money, seeking feminism. Generally, it's some sort of communal idea that they belong to, and that's the, the women way of feeling safe. There's a male way of feeling safe, which is a lot of times they're on their own. They don't have a community, so their reproductive ability is the only fucking thing they have. Create some babies, make some warriors. That's the only fucking thing that will protect me. Women have a female bonded society that has males, etc., providing for them and, and protecting them and the women themselves in larger numbers, the females, they can uh, defend, there's security numbers. Men don't have that, all they have is their dick. So there's these basic fears that are assuaged by these very simple things such as, hey, don't like kick them in the balls or even threaten to because that steers up some sort of like visceral uh, unsafety feeling. You know, there, there's a lot that goes into why men like their penis or attached to it or a lot of that bullshit that is denigrated by women and feminists and gynocentrists. There's a reason why it exists and we so often look past the fact that men are human and that they are human animals just like we all are and of course humans are really not liking the idea that they're like animals and that's our biggest problem actually is that we keep ignoring the fact that we have basic animal instincts that can be very simply explained by biology and evolutionary pressures and we're in this weird stage where we have civilization but also these weird animal like jungle instincts and we're trying to reconcile the two and it's a lot of where our problems are coming from and so we need to recognize that we're fucking animals one but two we're also fucking human beings with feelings and aspirations and dreams and men and women aren't any fucking different can we just fucking get to equality feminism please can we just fucking give men the same consideration you give to women and their feelings can we just do that can we just accomplish equality please Actually, um, <clears throat> I don't. Th I think it would work better if we took the feminism out of it because the other part, the the point of what I was going to say, uh, includes we need to be able to apply the same graveyard humor to women that we do to men. It's very unhealthy to freak out over every little thing, and it's as unhealthy to freak out over every little thing as it is to not allow any compassion even when something this big and bad happens and it's it it creates weakness where uh, where the lack of compassion creates a vulnerability um, this creates a weakness that makes you not not just vulnerable but unable to deal with ordinary experiences and I mean having somebody point out that women will accept behavior that they they maybe don't like from a guy if he's rich where they would smack the shit out of him for it if he was poor that's an ordinary experience there's nothing remarkable about that it, and if if there is something remarkable and upsetting about it then maybe women shouldn't have that double standard 
you know, but we can't have that discussion and we can't make fun of the freak out and we can't laugh about the, the fact that that happens because of feminism. And at the same time, in this, this situation, you know, we, we should ridicule this woman that did this because what she did was a display of such self-degrading and, and other degrading uh, petulance. If I can't, you know, if I can't have him, nobody can. You know, I'm 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 gonna try to kill him. You know, that kind of thing. <clears throat> that that's like it's beyond childish. It's worse than childish. She deserves to be outright laughed at, ridiculed. You know, um, and and of course, she deserves to be to be uh, put through the justice system, tried, and uh, you know, found guilty and punished, and everything else. Um, probably most of that won't happen. The closest we'll get is that people will uncomfortably laugh about the incident, or they'll comfortably laugh about the incident, and and it'll be one or the other because it's not there's there's not going to be people who don't laugh about this incident. Let's yeah. call it what it is, though, Hannah. It's savagery. Is yeah, it is. It's very it's savage. savagery. And it it's savagery that comes from the most the most self centered. Mm-hmm. And and self indulgent aspect of of a person the, the the thing that gets trained out of men by the time they're fourteen years old at the very least often younger um, this, that's what this woman displayed and it's of good men doing nothing kind of thing because on the other hand we also have what unfortunately uh, I see men culpable in as well and that is complete lack of belief of respect for women because they don't believe they can be villains they completely erase uh, female ability to be a complete human being and have agency and respect them like feminists should. Feminists say men and women should respect all women um, because they're, you know, completely well, yeah, yeah. Um, Oh, that's completely But they don't right. mean it. You know, it even it. even back when, back when there that. were no women on juries, there were prosecutors that were saying, we will never be able to convict a woman of murder until you can have women on the juries. There were prosecutors that were advocating Men on juries because women are killing people and we can't them we can't get them convicted for the crimes that they committed as sympathetic men are letting them off. I mean, how fucking? So I mean, what you're like talking that? about? That's not a you know, that's it's it is it it's like it it it's disrespectful to both sexes because it means that if a man is murdered by a woman, he wasn't worth as much as if he was murdered by a man, and if a woman commits the murder. It can't have been that bad, you know. There must have been something, you know. She she doesn't have the capacity to be as evil to have that the degree of selfishness it takes to want to take somebody else's life for whatever it want it is that you have, and yeah. and that's like it, it's a way of treating women like children, and then because women do get treated like children. There are women who take advantage of it and act like children because they know they can get away with it. Yeah, and you sort of see the guy enforcing that in a particular way because not only do you have the story of you know a man having his penis cut off, which is probably the greatest horror or one of the greatest horrors for most men worldwide, but just on top of that, the fact that he didn't want to let his family know about it rather he would let he would want to convince them that he actually did it to himself accidentally than to make him think that he was disrespecting a, a woman or that he was disrespecting his family's culture is what's so messed up about this whole thing and i, I think it's partially because th- what this man went through is probably <laughs> one of my personal greatest horrors if that were to ever happen to me just me putting myself into his shoes i guess sort of that's why i wanted to just sort of write my summary in such a gravely dark way because I don't think uh, there's any other possible way that I could cope with uh, just thinking that there's somebody that can do this to another human being, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, humor is a lot of times how we deal with stuff like that. It's it's the only way sometimes to get through looking into and looking at something that is that upsetting. I, I wanted to throw in some additional information uh, just so that we have more of the context Uh, One thing is that the reason why he couldn't... So they were dating for like four years. But he could not marry her despite the fact that she wanted to because um, his marriage was fixed. 
essentially, because of uh, some caste issue. So he didn't have a choice. He had to marry someone else. So she's punishing him for something that's out of his control. And clearly, if someone was willing to do something so barbaric to you, that's doing that is not going to make them want to marry you. Like that's that is evidence but, that proof a lot of times how that women you know, love it's or people love. It's a possession. Yeah. It's not they don't think of the other human. Basically, the best definition of love is willingness to sacrifice your happiness for someone else's. Mm -hmm. That applies to love on parental love, romantic love, all devoted love, all of that. Yeah. So basically, it is a desire that for someone else to be happy, even if it means at the expense of yourself, which is where it goes wrong sometimes, and people mm -hmm. can get abused. But when you have this like love, like I love my car, I love my puppy, like puppy maybe not the best example, but also you kind of love your animal or your car or whatever, like a possession. You don't really give them agency. You don't think of them as having an experience that in any way is valid on its own that doesn't depend on you. You're its owner. You have an ownership feeling about it. Um, and a lot of times that's how we see relationships play out and that's how they're presented on television, et cetera, between both sexes. It's, it's an ownership sort of love which provides or gives rise to such behaviors where you can't cut off their dick, where you can lock them up. Like Beauty and the Beast, you know, a lot of girls, that's kind of a, um, a Disney-fied rape fantasy where, you know, the guy wants you so much that he's going to risk going to prison or he's going to risk, you know, death, he's going to risk whatever. Um, and so lo being locked up, et cetera, to women, being a possession, being loved that way uh, becomes glamorized. And so we kind of see it in, in both men and women uh, and on television a lot. That's the only kind of love that they talk about. And it's not love. It's just literally possessing something. But people yeah. kind of associate that with romantic feelings. And so we ha we end up with this kind of bullshit where you're like, she didn't want me to fuck another woman so bad she got off my dick. Wow, she loves me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I guess she didn't, she, if she thought um, she couldn't have me, then, then, then I can't have anyone. And that, that, that shows, you know, and yeah, absolutely is fucked up. And for somebody asked me where this is taking place. So I'm going to say this. This is in India, um, just so you know. And India has a lot of problems with feminism. And, and we've had a, a guest on, if you look her up, her name is Jyoti Tiwari. And she has been on our show a couple of times and has a lot to say um, about the state of men and women, the caste system, uh, dowry issues in India. Uh, but it's also a place where... A lot of these men's issues are actually getting a lot of attention. There's, there was a TEDx talk recently where a, a man spoke at length about men's issues. And there's, lots, there's a pretty good ad campaign like PSAs and stuff about men's issues. So we are seeing some changes. And also, because i got to move on to the next story. We have a few to get through today. Um, I want to end this on a high note. She was convicted. She is going to um, serve time for attempted murder. Whatever, whatever the severity of that is in uh, India, and uh, this, so this is not going to go unnoticed. She's not getting away with anything. So, this at least justice will be served. It's just a shame that something like this had to happen in the first place. So. There is something else relevant about this. It's kind of important to point out. Okay. We keep hearing from feminists all the time that there is. It, they they use India all the time as an example of oh, this is what a rape culture looks like. This is why we need feminism. This is this is a real patriarchy. Blah 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 blah. This is kind of evidence that there's not necessarily the environment that feminists tell us in, in India. Um, this this is evidence that like this woman felt comfortable doing this she she was not afraid she wouldn't that she wouldn't get away with it now she didn't get away with it and that's good but at, it looks to me from this like women in india are accustomed to being able to punish men for for uh, uh scorning them or for rejecting them and this guy felt more comfortable taking the blame for it than than he did uh going after the woman for what she did to him and 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 seeking punishment against her and that tells me that it, there's not the patriarchy that that feminists describe in India and it is not the rape culture that feminists describe it's very obvious that there is an entirely different environment that they are not describing and not admitting to and and that's this kind of this exposes that yet again yeah one last thing. Somebody asked me what, how, what happened to him. Um, obviously, he survived, as Max pointed out in his uh, write-up, although the doctors are not going to be able to uh, reattach what he's missing. So he's going to have to live without it, or maybe they're going to do something else. I'm not really sure. 
So well, there is that guy we did the story about that has the bionic penis. Maybe there's reconstructive surgery perhaps, they can do. Yeah, that's right. That that was uh, one of the reasons why I brought it up. I think that is a good point. Yeah. So, uh, okay. So we're gonna go on, move on to the next story, and I will do the reading for this one. Okay. Um, a new Uber and Lyft ride hailing service will be beta testing next week via an invite only model. It will be open to the public on March 1st. The service is called Safer, S-A-F-R, and will be like Uber, but with one small difference. Um, but before we go into that more, I think what you're probably going to want to do is watch this video, which essentially behaves like an advertisement for it. So, without further ado, I will show you guys the video. Hold on a second here. And, okay. Are you guys in the SciTube and ready? I'm gonna yes, go ahead sir. and play it. If you're if yep. you are not listening on headphones, please mute so that we don't get a feedback. Here we go. Hi, I'm Alex Cap, and I'm Trisha O'Kelly. Welcome, Welcome to, to the rest of your life. I was going to say welcome to Safer. Right. But, but it's the same thing. What do you think? Oh my gosh, you're right. You may recognize Trisha and me from the new adventures of old Christine. Yes, but from this moment on, you'll also know us as your safer brand ambassadors. As women. Single women. Single mothers. With two kids each. With two daughters each. It's obvious why Alex and I want to be involved with such an amazing company like Safer. And we don't need to tell you why women need Safer. You've already signed up to drive, so you already know. But did you know that women drivers make up only 14% of all Uber drivers, Alex? I did not know that, Trisha. Did you also know that women on the whole earn 21% less than men do? That does not surprise me. Oh, God. <laughs> there it is. I'm, I'm just pausing for the banana just in case. Uh, but yep. it should be fine. Hey, I got a question. Are they, are they about to insinuate that women are safer to ride with than men. Uh, yes, but but before we say anything, I gotta play this. <laughs> wait, 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 wait! Just real quick, just real quick. At least they're trying to uh, not be completely caught as total liars and emphasize mm -hmm. on the whole uh, before they mention the the wage thing because we've yeah. been hammering away at that that they just don't have that this is their last little corner that they're hiding it's like well on the whole but it, it doesn't mean anything on the whole because women on the whole take off more days too and they don't work as much overtime so fucking shut up <laughs> but I, you you said on the whole okay I'm moving on <laughs> But here's the thing, and it's amazing. By signing up to Drive for Safer, you're not just joining a rideshare company. We're starting a movement. Yeah. We're creating a community of empowered women who are going to earn money, build wealth, and help keep each other safe. So we're all in this together. Tell every woman that you know, get your friends to sign up, because if there was ever a time when women needed to stand together, mm -hmm. it's now. So just so you know, we'll be with you every step of the way. Yeah, we believe in Safer, and we believe in you. Oh, I know. that was I nice. Mean, it sounded kind of weird coming out of my mouth. Like, I kind of loved it, But though. it's totally true. And you know what I think? What do you think? I think we should celebrate with wine. Oh, yes. If we need to go somewhere after, we just call us Safer. Oh, my God. Okay, I'm going to stop it there. That's about as much as I can take. Uh, They're fucking stereotypes right down to the sharing <laughs> wine. Just, yeah. It's perfect. Uh, uh, should I be the unpopular opinion first, or do you guys want to go ahead? No, no, go ahead, Max. Man. I'm Scott, not Max. No, I, I said <laughs> Max. Yeah, yeah, right, you can't tell oh, us apart oh, right one, now. One last oh, bit. No, no, one last bit I want to yeah. add in before we start talking about the, the safer uh, thing is uh, there is currently an ongoing legal discussion regarding whether or not this service, because it is exclusively for women and it's done by women, uh, whether or not this service violates anti-discrimination laws um, in New York and Boston at this time. So just throwing right. that in there. Okay, Scott, take it away. I'm all for it. I'm all okay. for it. I'm all for it. Here's the thing. You know, if they want to do this, I think it's great. I think it's fantastic. Um uh, I don't see a problem with it because I can understand where they're coming from to a certain degree. Uh, but I mean, you know, obviously damning the hole for the actions of a few is a really stupid thing to do. But if this is going to give people a peace of mind, if this is going to be something that can keep people safe, then cool, go for it, do it. I, I don't, I don't see an issue with it, honestly. I mean, there's nothing coming to mind that is like, unless they're unless they start going into like a, men can't ride safer because fuck man, blah blah blah. You know, unless they start going into one of those fucking stupid rad femme tirades, 
I don't, I don't see a problem with it. I mean, you know, it's fine. Cool, Sounds do good it. To me, okay. You know what? Yeah. Um, it's actually safer for male cab drivers this way. Oh well, that, yeah, that I was mean, the other thing I wanted you to see, say. Yeah, go ahead. You see story after story in the news. Story after story of male cab drivers uh, having like their their uh, their dash cam being the only thing that saves them from a, a woman trying to use a false accusation to get out of paying thirteen dollar cab fare. Right. Um, and it's like it's it's happened so much that you know I looked into the this this a while back in any Uber forums like. Forums where Uber drivers get together and discuss, you know, what's the best way to do this job and how can I make things easier for myself and how do I make the most money doing this and that kind of thing. Um, there's there's driver after driver saying, if you're a dude, get a dash cam. Don't drive without a dash cam. Somebody will use a false rape accusation to get out of their fare. It's yeah, that common. Yeah, CYA, cover your ass. Always yeah, cover yeah. your ass. And... And in this instance, one of two things is going to happen. You know, um, all all the women that would make that kind of accusation, that would use that kind of accusation, because they they actively feel like, oh, I'm in men are rapists, all men are bad, you know, blah blah blah. Those women are going to be riding in these these chick cabs. Um, the only women that are going to ride with the male cab drivers are the ones that are or that are actually looking to, you know, either they're not scared and they don't care and they just want to get where they're going or they're looking to make the accusation. So we'll see more dash cams in, in the men's cars and uh, we'll see less men getting accused all around. Um, and the other thing is we may end up seeing the first accusation against a female cab driver and it's going to be a much more difficult thing to do because like you can accuse a man of just hitting on you and it's it's a form of molestation in the eyes of the law when um when you accuse a woman of it people are like yeah so you know unless she actually did something overtly and obviously violent Nobody even wants to pay attention. And then if she did do something overtly and obviously violent, there are still people who don't want to take it seriously. You know, especially um, the idea of a woman raping another woman. People can't rape, wrap their hands around or their head, heads around that. The idea is like, well, you know, that that doesn't happen. That never happens. Well, look up a a documentary. I don't recommend watching it, but look up a documentary called "She Stole My Voice." And watch the discussion about it. Read the interviews, and and you'll find out that it's not as uncommon as you think. And uh, but in any case, yeah, I I would expect some changes to the entire industry around this, and they wouldn't necessarily all be bad because this may protect uh, male drivers from that situation where where women are using using false accusations to get out of uh, cab fare. Yeah, In you, fact, looking... when a woman files a false charge and she gets busted for filing a false charge, if this service is available in her community and she chose to ride with a male driver instead, now he can say he was targeted. Yeah. I mean, we, we saw it you know, recently with the, with the girl that got into the, the Uber, with the guy with the hula skirt thing. With the bobblehead on his, uh, on his, the, um, and that female doctor that like flipped shit and threw this guy's yeah. like his glove compartment contents all over the street, because right. he yeah. Yeah. somewhere. You know, yeah. we've seen stuff like that happen. Where, you know what? Frankly, when you, when you watch the tirades that these people are going on, they're they're yelling at these men and degrading the men for being men, among other things, and that sort of thing. I would imagine has less possibility to happen in a in a situation like this with the safer thing. So, you know, hopefully, like, you know, Hannah uh, pointed out fairly well was that, you know, this is this protects male drivers from not having to be in that kind of situation where that could potentially happen. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it is always a, it is always better to see why it's always better to cover your ass. So it's, you know, regardless if you're a male or a female driver, whatever. But, you know, I, I think this helps alleviate a lot of potential problems. And I don't know that it solves others, but it goes it goes a good distance to actually helping some people out because there are some people who just will feel safer and that's never a bad thing. I don't think it, you know, if, if somebody's not comfortable having a man drive them around then 
it's good that they have this option now. So mm-hmm. you know, I'm all for it. Well, actually, yeah. it turns out I don't think that your opinion is as unpopular as you think it is. But personally, <laughs> no, because I, I'm in the same I, – I feel the same way. Like I feel like, okay, as a, a person who usually errs on the side of freedom of choice for businesses and stuff, I think that mm. businesses should be able to discriminate however they want, and then the market will usually decide what happens to them as a result. So yeah. if th- I wouldn't, I wouldn't hold, uh, I wouldn't, I won't have double standards for one thing and not another. So yeah, I mean, safer go for it. Um, I, I personally, I, I think that it's um, if it helps women feel safe when they're, you know, uh, if a woman is driving the car, then good for them. But but there may become uh, cases may arise that will that could demonstrate that women just like men are capable of you know doing bad things and if oh, they, they will if they, yeah you, they, it's, it's a matter of time happen. it will it's just a matter of happen. time yeah and so yeah, it's a lot of averages it may turn out good. essentially that their uh philosophy that the only way you can keep women safe is if other if is if other women are around them will mm-hmm. crumble because the fact is women are still people and they're and they're flawed right. just like men are so you know you're going to run into right. issues and not just with drivers but with passengers as hannah was sort of alluding to so right but yeah i mean i'm like go for it you know do do it i don't care well um, when i said it was unpopular i mean it's like you know we get we're such a knee-jerk we're in such a state of knee-jerk reactionism when things like this pop up it's like oh what is this all female thing you know it's like just the internet tends to you know, go a little bit crazy about stuff like this without actually looking into it or thinking about it more deeply. So I didn't mean you guys specifically. I'm just, oh, just no, it's talking fine. in general terms. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I like I said, it, it's fine. Like I, I are on the side of freedom. If that's what people want to yeah. do, go for it. The market will usually shake out. Um, I, yeah. I, I, I hope that it works out, but I have a bit, I have a feeling that by cutting out half of your customer base, you may find that you're not making enough money, but we'll see how it works out for them. So well, I think they're know, probably going to have people finding drivers, honestly, before before anything even begins. I think the drivers, that's going to be an issue. Yeah. How many yeah, women want to do this? Well, that's just honestly. it. That's why they said the, the girls uh, in the video, uh, the, the super basic bitches in the video said that, uh, <laughs> did you realize that, you know, only, what was it like? I think it was like 20% or less. Oh, 14%. Uh, 14. 14. Yeah, 14% yeah, 14. of all Uber drivers are female. Well, that's no, yeah. that's that's not discrimination. Even if you act like shock and awe at it, that means that right. only fourteen percent of women have chosen to done, do that job. I use Lyft yeah, anybody here can in, become an Uber driver. Yeah, I use Lyft here in Chicago, and I got to tell you, I've had women drivers almost half the time. So I don't know if it's an Uber thing or just my luck, because I know that this is just a you know an anecdote, or or maybe Lyft is a little bit more you know better about putting women in it, or more women just want to use it. I don't know. But I, I've had lots of women drivers, and they've all been just fine, you know. So, but anyway, um, I guess there's not much else to say about it. What do you guys think? Uh, do you think that this uh, should, you know, uh, violate some kind of uh, discrimination law? And if so, you know, go ahead and make your statement in the comments. Personally, I don't think there should be discrimination laws, but that's my belief system. So, you know, you do what you want. Um, we're going to move on to the next story. So, uh, Mr. Scott, if you could tell us a little bit about the story that, that's entitled They Can't Keep Getting Away With It. In the immediate wake of the tragic attack on a Quebecan mosque, the facts of the situation were scarce and the rumor mill was running full throttle. Early on, the Twitter account Reuters News Break posted the names and pictures of alleged assailants. The Twitter account claimed the suspect, sorry. This is just so funny. Uh, the Twitter account claimed that the suspects were noted white supremacists David M. Terrini and Matthew Fortier. <laughs> Are you serious? Yes. <laughs> the internet wasted no time spreading this news as the truth and soon found its way onto the front page of the left-leaning news outlet, The Daily Beast, who cited the Reuters Twitter account as their source. The only problem with this is that the Twitter account Reuters Newsbreak is a self-admitted parody account not linked with the actual Reuters news agency in any way. Unsurprisingly, the information they provided was bogus. Davis M.J. Arini is actually Davis M.G. Arini, skull enthusiast, pawn villain, impersonator, and self-described race realist. (laughs) (laughs) Likewise, Matthew Fortier is actually Matthew Forney clickbait blogger, part-time potato kin, and professional pickup artist. Once word of the rush ruse reached the Daily Beast editors, they pulled the fake names and issued an editor's note apology, apologizing. 
While the prank pulled by the parody Twitter account, which has since been suspended, appears to be callous in a time of tragedy, it drives home a very topical point about the state of modern journalism. And can, yeah. can, can I just jump right in on this one? Yeah, do it, do it. Okay, this is this is something that I've talked about for fucking probably two decades now, and it's really coming to a head now. We're seeing we are seeing the fruit born of what has been reaped for forty years, basically. Um, back in the late seventies, early eighties, uh, we saw a shift in news. We saw things like uh, C-SPAN was on twenty four hours a day. Um, CNN came to prominence. They were a twenty four hour news network. And all the uh, you know, television stations started actually staying on past midnight. That was that was a big deal, and we have seen the erosion of our society because of a twenty-four hour news cycle, mm -hmm. wherein they are so hungry for content, they are so hungry for scoops, for getting, for getting there first, for getting the page clicks, getting the page views, getting the the Nielsen ratings, that they will put fucking anything on the fucking television mm -hmm. or the internet as it were and you know like i said i've been saying this for fucking years and it is it is this is this is a it's like a glowing red sign of you were right scott hall <laughs> it's like yeah. yes thank you i know it's like people are so hungry they will fucking they will they just lap up anything and that's because of the 24-hour news cycle and the way it has eroded uh journalism and i think and in a larger sense, society. So I just, I think this is fucking, it's hilarious and it's sad at the same time. I mean, you know, it's just, it's sad that we've gotten to this point, but it's hilarious that these fucking idiots did this. It's just like, oh God, you just, you have no integrity. You have like, do, do, you, do you not have access to the fucking AP? Do you not, do you not know how to check sources? Do you not, do you not have an editor at your site at the Daily Beast that is in charge of this sort of thing? This is fucking Bush League. Yep. Oh, this is ridiculous. They're that's accustomed ridiculous. to not being questioned. Well, yeah, I mean, that's part of it, too. But, I mean, you, get, you have to, like, a da the Daily Beast has been around long enough that I, well, okay, maybe maybe I'm being foolish here thinking that they would ascribe to or subscribe to any kind of journalistic standards, but I would think that they would. So maybe that's well, just me being naive. So Think about this. All right, go back to the Elliot Roger thing. Do you know who the source was for the the assertion that Elliot Roger was a men's rights activist? No, you're not idea. actually. Was it Futrell? David Futrell's yeah. We Hunted oh, the Mammoth blog Fucking that guy. used to be called Man Boobs. And it was, um, he wrote it, and if I remember right, um, the Daily Kos laundered his blog post through their site and then mm. other sites laundered the the claim through their site by citing not Futrell but the Daily Costs and then a third layer of more credible news sites laundered the the claim through their sites by citing the second layer uh, or really the third layer of uh, you know more credible blogs than the less credible blogs and so on until it got to mainstream news media saying that he was an MRA Right. And this is how they do this, um, and they're they're so eager, and it's, they're like foaming at the mouth, eager to get rid of the the fact that the the majority of these types of incidents are are committed by nut jobs, and uh, you know, and and committed by people with serious issues, whether it's ideological issues, whether there's mental health issues that are untreated. Um, whether they've been abused in their own lives, you know, whatever they're going, and and make it about their sex or their skin color when they're white. They don't want it to be about their skin color when they're not white. They don't want it to be about their ideology if they're not conservative, but they do if they are conservative, you know, and so on. Um, they want it to 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 mold every single one of these incidents to fit a narrative that they will repeat anything, anything. Mm -hmm. That makes it fit that narrative, and they Absolutely. they don't fact check because they don't care. They don't care if it's true or not. They care if they can get people to believe it. And if there were not opposing ideological sites, and and sites that are are genuine fact checkers, and sites that genuinely, well, hey, wait a minute, you you know that's actually, you just fell for a scam, um, and 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 really the only difference between. 
trolling someone and scamming someone is whether you're doing it for kicks or whether you're doing it for money. Uh, but uh, yeah, the, if there weren't people, you know, pointing that shit out, they would get away with it. If if the Daily Beast had not been called on what they did, more mainstream than them sites. You'd have seen it on CNN. You'd have seen it on NBC. You'd have seen it seen it on. Uh, all of the various left-wing news media. Oh, these two, these two uh, PUAs, these two right-wingers. You know, they, these are the guys that did this, and they're it's it's really bad. This is this is what's so bad about this particular ideology. This is what's so bad about white people. You know, that's what we would have been seeing. And if it was just like our level of of fact checkers with with uh, you know not hundreds of thousands of viewers, but but uh, several thousand, you know, like in the thirty thousands, I think we have now. Um, that that never would have been loud enough to get them to um, admit that they were wrong, you know. And it's it's the same thing. I hate to say it, but when Fox News does it with right wing stuff, and and runs something that isn't entirely factual, CNN catches them. And PMS NBC catches them. You know, these guys may be um, not perfect. You know, none of them are perfect. They're all dishonest in one way or another. They're all ideological. They have to keep each other honest. And we have to push to keep them all honest. And, yeah, Joey Jojo says people still believe Elliot Roger was an MRA. Because nobody at a higher level looked at that and went, you know that's bullshit. Nobody above the the level of men's rights media, which has not gotten the audience yet that that these big conglomerates have, nobody at the conglomerate level ever questioned that. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have any thoughts on this? I think the only thing that's worse or better than this that I can think of off the top of my head was when. Uh, I can't remember what news organization it was, but they were reporting on the Korean airliner that went down, and they got the names of the four captains. Well, they didn't, but it was. Oh, yeah, you remember? Yeah, that? yep. They they put the phony names, the the naughty names up there. The woman said it live on TV. That was yeah. brilliant. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I wish I could remember what the names were. They were really oh, funny. I, I remember. Do you? Oh. Uh, did I say them at the risk of sounding completely racist? I'll do it. Okay. Well, one of the they were some ting wong. <laughs> we too low. Oh my god. Holy pook. <laughs> and bang ding ow. <laughs> and they they didn't they didn't, she didn't catch read it. those out loud and no. notice. No, no, or she just, read, she just read she it read read off just beat for beat. Oh just didn't god. even yeah. notice. Oh, yeah, she's like, brutal. and we can confirm that these are the names of the four airliner captains that died. <laughs> Good lord, crash. that's oh. the, the, and you know, yeah, no, that's not at all racist, Max. It's just showing how incompetent the media can be, um, just yeah, like yeah. with this story, and or, or or nefarious, as Hannah was pointing out, that we maybe it's less about getting the right story uh, or getting the story right, but more about telling the story they want. So yeah, being um, sensationalist, yeah. Yeah, and well, I, I, I want to say uh, I want to also throw in there that um, uh, I think that I can speak for all of us when I say for anyone who knows anybody that, or you know was affected by this tragedy, um, our heart goes out to you, and we hope you know you you have our uh, complete support in this really trying time. The these shootings. Um, they're, they're happening all the time and it is it is terrible no matter where it's coming from because there is uh, There's something kind of interesting about this particular story in terms of uh, what we have learned Which is different from what maybe some people might have expected uh, But go ahead Scott. What were you gonna say? Oh, I was gonna say um, I don't know if it's I don't know if it's always a malicious thing if they're if they're doing it because of ideological reasons um, but if you look at the way uh, websites and information on the internet work there's a thing called an SEO and um, uh, you the, the easy way to explain it is like if you use certain keywords if you use certain things that are like hot mm -hmm. um, it's gonna get better attention to what you're doing 
So I I know that some sites will do that. Like when they're when they're plugging in their keywords, they will you know they will purposely even if it has nothing to do with the content of what they're doing, they will use these things in the SEO to try and get a, a higher engagement rating. So there's that's that's also another factor in it too. So you know it's I don't I don't want to attribute malice to everything that yeah. these folks are doing, but there's you know because sometimes it's it's just it's a matter of them trying to get clicks. It's a matter of them trying to, you know, drive traffic and all that sort of mm-hmm. thing. So, you know, it's sometimes it's just about the sensational aspect of, you know, whatever's happening. So, but anyway, not to play devil's advocate too much, but just to add that little bit of information. Okay. There. So, yeah, that's cool anyway, for what it's worth. So. Um, all right. And there was, Oh shit. Where the fucking, what, what the hell happened? <laughs> I was no, I was doing Uh-oh. something, and the news story disappeared. Uh, it turned out the guy who did something it, long, Brian. No, uh, <laughs> no, uh, the the mosque shooting. Um, according to the Montreal Gazette, uh, Quebec mosque shooting. Alexandre Bissonnette faces eleven charges. Uh, so this is the person that they have arrested. Handcuffed in the prisoner's box, Alexandre Bissonnette bowed his head as the charges against him were read out late Monday after a shooting spree at the Quebec City Mosque that has shaken the community, Muslims and non-Muslims alike. Six counts of first-degree murder and five counts of attempted murder using a restricted firearm. Though police and politicians have spoken of terrorism since the 27-year-old student allegedly opened fire just after the last prayers on Sunday, Bissonnette was not charged with any terrorism-related offensive. Asked why, Crown Prosecutor Thomas Jacques has said Bissonnette was charged according to the evidence available. I'm sorry if I butcher these French names, but fuck it, that's not what I do. No, you got it. But you'll understand that the events happened very recently, Jacques told reporters. The investigation is ongoing. Bissonnette who was a student in the faculty of of social sciences, so he was a student in the faculty of social sciences at University Laval, just a short drive from the mosque that was attacked, showed no emotion during his brief hearing at the Quebec City Courthouse. His lawyer did not enter a plea, and the accused will next appear in court on February 21st. In a press release issued late Monday night, Hima Quebec announced that the Quebec mosque is shoot the, the Quebec mosque shooting suspect was one of its employees. Hima Quebec expressed his its deepest sympathies to the families of the victims of the tragedy and will not provide any further comments regarding Bissonnette so as not to hinder the police investigation. Earlier in the day, police searched the home of Bissonnette's parents in the Cap Rouge district of Quebec City. The young man, who appears to have acted alone despite initial reports of, an, of a second gunman, did not have a previous criminal record and was known as an introvert and a victim of bullying in school. Posts on his Facebook page show that he liked Donald Trump, French Front National Leader Marine Le Pen, and Matthew Bach Cote, a Quebec City columnist known for his pro-nationalist and anti-multicultural views. He dressed up as the Grim Reaper for Halloween, and his musical tastes range from Katy Perry to Megadeth. Bissonnette's father is listed in the sales deed of the house as an investigator, and according to Bissonnette's Facebook page, which has since been taken offline, his grandfather was a decorated war hero. But Bissonnette's page does not reveal a great deal about his possible motivations. A fellow university student who knew Bissonnette from high school in Cap Rouge said the accused had developed radical views. Quote, He was not overtly racist or Islamophobic, but he had borderline misogynistic Islamophobic viewpoints, said Vincent Bossionol, who is taking international studies at University Laval. Unfortunately, that's become more or less acceptable these days. So, and the story goes on, but I just wanted to show where they're at right now and what this, well, let's just put it this way. Um, a, there is a powder keg that appears to have sparked. Um, and we are, we are starting to see, it's really unfortunate that this happened. And uh, I think that, you know, what this kid did is, is reprehensible. Um, but unfortunately, this story is going to be spun. I mean, not spun. Let me let me reframe that. It's going to be used um, in a in a manner by the media, most likely, against everyone that shares opinions that this young man had. It's going to be all Elliot Roger all over again, basically. So and his and his classmates. Uh belief about him is going to be taken as gospel nobody's going to actually look and see if he actually hated women and hated 
uh, Islam. They're just going to make assumptions. They're not going to look and see if he was simply critical of dysfunctional behavior in both groups. And there's dysfunctional behavior in every group. And there shouldn't be any group whose dysfunctional behavior is, uh, is exempt from criticism. But, you know, this is not, this is not outside of human nature. Um, every segment of humanity, every segment of the population of the world has weak links. And this is a weak link. Uh, and I hate to say it that way, but that's the way it is. There is always going to be somebody who takes any given idea about morals and values and right and wrong and their own rights versus other people's rights and where the boundary is between the two. Uh, they're going to take that as an excuse to engage in vigilante violence or self-interest violence. And, and there's always going to be somebody that does that. And it's, it doesn't really matter what the ideology is behind it. It doesn't matter if it's left wing, left wing, right wing. It doesn't matter if it's religious. It doesn't matter if it's non-religious. What matters is that the individual crossed the line between thinking, yes, it is appropriate to to criticize the things I disagree with. And yes, it is appropriate to use violence to enforce my will on other people. And the problem isn't with the ideology. The problem is with the belief that one has the right to use violence to enforce their will on other people. And until we get to the point where we can acknowledge that, and we can acknowledge that that is not a characteristic that is unique to either sex, or unique to any belief system. And yeah, there are some belief systems that encourage it more than others, uh, but it is not unique to any belief system. Until we can get to the point where we acknowledge what that is and start combating that, we're going to keep seeing this happen over and over and over again. And we're going to keep seeing people exploit these incidents instead of addressing them. Mm -hmm. over and over again well I, we'll see how it goes i hope that uh um again you know it's it's terrible that this happened uh this this young man should definitely uh you know be held accountable and he will be uh, he's been arrested and everything so i guess we'll we'll see how that goes but god i, I really this 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 escalation i feared this with the with all this rhetoric you know around um and not just like the election and and stuff but even before that but when brexit was happening when uh fucking uh, just you know just what mras have been trying to do to get heard and all the things that have been going on there this has been going on for a long time and i'm uh, you know it's it's just really saddening to see that that this has come to the point where people think violence is the solution uh this is just a terrible terrible thing so um speaking of violence to create solutions i think we're gonna move on to the next story uh hannah since you wrote it uh tell us about the drunken girl gang if you would be so kind hannah if oh. the mute button will work okay <laughs> so the drunken girl gang um, on November 28th, 2015, 26 year old Brogan Gilliard, I don't know if this is Gilliard or Gilliard, uh, and, and for the people in the chat, a, a good explanation of um, why I mispronounce things all the time. I'm from Ohio. Uh, I'm currently living in Ohio. Mm -hmm. uh, now, it, it, that's a Jeff Foxworthy joke for anybody that's familiar with him. But um, so I'm from Ohio. I currently live in Ohio. We have a community here, the, uh, the, the name of which is spelled V-E-R-S-A-I-L-L-E-S. -L -L -E People from all over the world will be familiar with the correct pronunciation of that. Here it's pronounced Versailles. <laughs> so with that said, I'm going to pronounce this woman's name Gilliard and hopefully I'm right, but if I'm not, that's my excuse. Uh, so 26-year-old Brogan Gilliard 
uh, 22-year-old Paige Cunningham and 20-year-old Sharon or Shannon Jones met their 19-year-old victim, whose name has not been published, in a bar in Barrow in Furness, that's Furness, uh, Cambria. According to the Telegraph, the three women, referred to as girls in the article, at, at, uh, although they were all adults, lured the victim back to Gilliard's home on Keith Street, where they plied him with vodka until he lost consciousness. Once he was incapacitated, they shredded his clothes and filmed themselves sexually assaulting him, while Brogan Gilliard ignored the crying of her three children upstairs. The women posed, er, posted the evidence, which included video and 40 still shots on social media, where it was seen by the victim's girlfriend. The ordeal included sexual assault with a pair of scissors oh. and ritual humiliation, after which the victim required hospital treatment. The women posed individually for trophy shots beside their nude victim, including a photo of Gilliard giving a V sign for victory in front of him. Now, uh, this is for for the Americans in the audience. This the the footballer is uh, this is a soccer player, and if I understand correctly, that's actually like a frequent thing. That's that's a soccer thing. Um, but anyway. Prosecutor Francis uh, McEntee emphasized that the purpose of the assault was to demean and humiliate the victim for the perpetrator's own pleasure. Describing Gilliard's expression as smirking, Judge Graham Knowles castigated her for gloating. Gilliard's own statement to the police proves them right. She said, I cut his hair in clothes because he's a dick. Two of the three women are mothers with previous victims. Uh, convictions for violent crimes and Gilliard has had her children removed from her home and two of them adopted for unrelated circumstances the third Shannon Jones has no previous convictions her lawyer is quoted trying to uh, excuse her behavior due to overconsumption of alcohol and drugs the claim seems not to have swayed the judge who said that the women had entirely dehumanized their victim and that he sentenced them as if it had been three men assaulting a female. He is quoted in the Telegraph. I sentenced three people for glorifying in the humiliation and degradation of a fellow human being. All three women pleaded guilty to sexual assault. Brogan Gilliard, Gilliard has been uh, sentenced to 31 months, which is a year and seven months, and Paige Cunningham to 10 months. Shannon Jones will be sentenced at a later date. All three women have also been required to register as sex offenders and are subject to restraining orders. So there's kind of good and bad in this. Obviously, it's good that they've been uh, convicted, it's good that they've been sentenced, and it's good that the judge was able to acknowledge that what they did was monstrous, not just funny. Um, and it's there's there was more in the article. The guy was very much traumatized. He's got symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder he's uh, and he was physically injured by this there were there were there were physical injuries that uh, were described in the article um, and all of it was posted on social media so these women posted themselves on social media acting like absolute animals so it was very difficult for the legal system to look at that and say oh they were just you know uh, that was an accident. There, there's women that were behaving badly because they were, um, they were drunk. But I'm not sure. I believe that the judge's sentence was as much as he would have given men who did this. In fact, um, I I wonder if men who did this would have had rape thrown at them instead of just sexual assault. And if they had had rape thrown at them, the sentencing would have been more harsh. So I know he thinks that he did the same thing um, that he would have done had it been men, but I suspect that he, he's he's a little blinded to uh, to that. And I think in the UK the law is different. Um, I think in the UK there is no designation uh, of rape if a woman is the one committing the crime. So. It's possible that they did things that could have been de uh, defined as rape, could have been labeled rape, that were not uh, because they were women. And the other thing is, the Telegraph article didn't 
have the word woman or the word women in it. The whole time that they were talking about this, they called these adults girls. They infantilized the perpetrators to cushion the blow. These were just girls out of control. 26 years old is old enough to have graduated from college or to have been, you know, if you, if you, uh, it's been, it's old enough to have been through an entire tour in the military, you know, and, and been out for a while. So 26 years old is not a girl when you, when you've committed a crime. It's, this is, this was not a girl's night out. This was not girls out of control. This was not girls gone wild. This was women acting like animals. Well, and the youngest, the youngest one was the man. The youngest was was twenty. Well, the youngest, the youngest person was older in the than whole, the victim. Yeah, the victim was the youngest person involved. Right, the youngest was older than the victim. Mm -hmm. well, so you know, they, you know what the most worrying thing about this is, though, honestly, is the fact that the judge said that he charged them as though they were men. And if that isn't just a glaring, glowing sign saying this is a problem, then I'm not really sure what is. Because mm -hmm. the fact that he acknowledged that he charged them as if they were men, and the fact that this isn't just seen as a crime, regardless of who does it, is a problem. The fact that he had to to say to come right out and point out that there is a difference in the way females and males are charged for doing the same crime is a huge problem. That should set off warning alarms like crazy for anybody reading this. This is fucking nuts because there is a set of standard. It's like, oh, well, you know, we can't charge women as harshly because, you know, they didn't mean it or maybe is their time in the month or what, you know, whatever the fucking excuse is, whatever dumb down fucking thing they would say to, you know, excuse this kind of behavior, this fucking, again, this kind of savagery. Um, this, this is, that is very troubling to me. That is mm -hmm. very, very troubling to me. Yeah. I'm not really sure what else to add to this. I mean, it's terrible, but um, at least I guess some justice is going to happen, but yeah, I mean, to, to uh, Scott and Hannah's points as well. Well, there is, it, there's a silver lining in that dark spot. And that silver lining is, in saying I charge them as men, the judge is acknowledging that women don't get charged as men. Mm -hmm. Women, women, he's, he's acknowledged the pussy pass. It's a first step. <laughs> We can talk about the pussy pass openly because the pussy pass has just been articulated by a judge. And the judge just said you have to commit an atrocity and post physical video and photo evidence of your atrocity to where it can't be denied as an atrocity before we will even consider the pussy pass unmerited. So now we just have to start working on changing the uh, the the line they draw until we can get it to a point where we've erased the line and there will be no more pussy pass the pussy pass needs to go away yeah. we gotta but get it's, away it's, from that and go towards you know, thought crimes and that judge may not have admit, meant to expose the pussy pass but the pussy pass is exposed it's naked now <laughs> it's time to grab them by the pussy pass <laughs> I knew it. and take it away <laughs> Yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, you couldn't resist, could you, Hannah? No, couldn't resist. <laughs> Are you kidding? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. okay. Um, I guess we'll go ahead and move on to the next story here. So hold on, just a second. Uh, all right. So it looks like it is about ethics and games journalism. Concluding an investigation that lasted over a year, the FBI has come forward to announce that nothing criminal occurred or was instigated by the notorious uh, hate group known as Gamergate. In case you have been living under a rock or have a life IRL, Gamergate was a consumer revolt against corrupt video game journalism, which was at its height in about 2014-2015. GG met with lots of resistance from journos, cultural critics, celebrities, e-celebrities, Law & Order SVU, and even politicians looking to score virtue points and silence opposing voices. 
The investigation focused on feminist frequencies Anita Sarkeesian and, well, let's call her a game developer, for lack of a better term, Brianna Wu, who used claims of death threats and online abuse as a means to go from literally who to possible congressional candidate. I'm not kidding. There was no mention of Gamergate catalyst Zoe Quinn, although she did claim to be a victim as well, even appearing at the UN with Anita Sarkeesian to call for action against online harassment and apparently people saying, you're a liar, you suck. The investigation looked into shooting threats against Sarkeesian at Utah State, which yielded no credible let, uh, links or threats to from Gamergate. There was an underage individual who was warned to stop sending threatening emails, to which the individual agreed and promised to stop. The FBI did not press charges. They also investigated instances of swatting, but were unable to find any actionable leads that connect it to Gamergate. In fact, in most cases, the FBI determined those involved with threats were either unrelated to Gamergate, trolls, or were looking to escalate the culture war taking place, trolls. The FBI closed the case after coming to the conclusion that there are no actionable leads or suspects to pursue. Brianna Wu stated that assuming she wins the race for Congress, lol, she will meet with the FBI for this app appalling failure of justice. Fucking lol. All right. So Let's everybody go. get your lol cow glove milking gloves out because Brianna Wu is going to present. <laughs> <laughs> no, here, here's the thing. Uh, Brianna Wu saying that there's, you know, there, there was no justice. There was no justice. Well, the FBI investigated this thing for over a year. And so guess what? You know what? They did their due diligence. They found that there was no reason to move forward. And they left it alone because she's completely full of shit. Um, you know, this is funny uh, in a lot of respects going forward. I think it's going to be really funny. And I hope because it, it, here's the thing: it's like Gamergate is pretty much the fire has pretty much died down at this point. You know, mm -hmm. most people have moved on. It's been it's v very quiet except for these you know fucking retards who are like, oh, Gamergate every now and again. They you know they throw up the boogeyman because you know why why waste a perfectly good, uh, good boogeyman? But I hope like I hope that if and when Brianna Wu does actually run for Congress, I hope that people get a little bit of that fire in their belly and they keep bringing this stuff up and showing off what she did during this whole ordeal to show what a phony fucking lying pile of shit she is. Um, I think that's all we can hope for at this point because, you know, obviously the FBI has looked into this for more than a year and nothing happened. You know, they're like, there's no actionable leads here. There's nothing that we can do about this because nothing has been done. So... You know, fucking awesome. You know, mm -hmm. tell us something we didn't already know, basically. But I hope people, I hope people hold her feet to the fire, like when she tries to trot this boogeyman out and fucking, you know, show her for the phony ass lying piece of shit she is. So, uh, that's all yeah. we can hope for at this point. That's it. Um, and of course, she's going to call that a threat. But you know, oh god, yeah. Social <laughs> justice <laughs> types always take being exposed as liars as a threat. Mm -hmm. yep I thought it was funny and I'm glad that uh, we got that out and the FBI looked into it found nothing, we're done Gamergate was not guilty of anything at least that they could find and this is pretty much exactly what I thought it was So, the hashtag has been exonerated yes. <laughs> I, now I wonder if Twitter I wonder if Twitter will let us use it again Oh, we can use it. It Probably just won't not. show up. You I mean, know, that's like, what I mean. If a billion people are using it all at once, it still won't trend. No, they're hiding mm -hmm. things. They're still. I'm shadow banned again right now. Um, I finally figured out how to tell I'm shadow banned, even if I don't have anybody to look up, you know, my my account and and see. Um, I I look at the analytics, and if I'm shadow banned, my analytics don't work, and uh, they're they're not working right now. So. This is, this is when something political goes on, they shadow ban all the people that they have on their, their list of labeled conservatives and men's rights activists and uh, shit, shit stirrers and stuff. That they're not going to uh, unsuppress the hashtag. And mm -hmm. In fact, I watched them actually suppress conservative hashtags related to the uh, Muslim ban accusation 
and the uh, the temper tantrum that the left had over Trump firing an insubordinate employee because uh, that's what she was. Um, they the the uh, the hashtags that conservatives were using on Twitter that night um, trended immediately, and it was it was pretty big. It, it was there were there were numerous uh, tweets per per second being you know going through, and all of a sudden they disappeared. And buzzwords for the left started trending with barely any tweets at all. And if I wasn't on the damn Chromebook having difficulty d getting screenshots, I would have something to show you. But um, it's it was it was very interesting to watch. They're still doing all the same shit they did before the election, and they're going to continue to do it for as long as they can get away with it. And they've they've pretty much turned their about statement and. The, the combination of that about statement and their terms of service, which, which uh, infer that there are, or insinuate at least, that there are specific things that will lead to a ban. And so a ban would be related specifically to those things and not just for any reason whatsoever. Um, and their about statement is, is it basically the statement that they provide a place for people to communicate without barriers. Uh, that combination becomes false advertising based on the way they behave. And, and that's just going to be the way it is because there's no way to hold them accountable for that because they don't charge us for being there. At least so far as I know, there's no way to hold them accountable for that other mm -hmm. than to go to other social media and use other social media. Yeah. Just not Instagram. Mm -hmm. I don't want shit to do with Instagram. No, I think Instagram's probably going to do the same thing. Facebook is going to do the same thing. I'm talking about like get on Gab. Um, I'm on Gab. I'm on Mines. I, I like both of those. Um, get on uh, vote uh, vote.com, which is uh, an alternative to to uh, uh, Reddit. You know, look at the um, GNU Soch uh, list at GN. Uh, what is it? Soch G U H N O O dot O R G is the thing that I have bookmarked that leads to the page that tells all the different ones and and what they. Uh, uh, what they do, and Gab is gab.ai, not .com. Uh, you know, those are places that you can actually speak freely, and uh, those are those are places where you're not going to be censored. And no, uh, DC Frank, no, I don't think SJWs have any shame. They don't care if what they're doing is wrong. They only care if it works. Um, but yeah, don't you know, holding them, holding Twitter's feet to the fire that way will work. Um, at writing to their advertisers, a disrespectful nod might work, but there isn't a legal avenue where I don't think in, in, in the U.S. that there's any legal avenue where we could go through and, and, and uh, do anything. The closest might be um, every time Twitter shadow bans me, then they fill my feed with ads for pay us to promote your tweets. So it's like, well, well, we'll withhold your access to the site unless you pay us because we don't like what you said. That might, that might, and it'd be, it would be a huge stretch, but that might be actionable if I did pay them and then were, was able to prove that other people didn't have to. Um, but, but aside from that, you know, Twitter is shit and Facebook is shit. Use them when you can get some results from them, but use the other sites. And, and hopefully they'll grow and there won't be any need for these uh, censoring sites. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does anybody else have any thoughts on this or should we move on to the final story? Okay, we're going to move on to the last story. Scott? All right. In Against Our Will, Susan, Susan Brown Miller wrote how Emmett Till, a black boy lynched in the South during Jim Crow, shared responsibility with his white male murderers in a system of sexual ownership of women. Now we find out that Carolyn Brandt, the woman who accused him of sexual harassing, sexually harassing her, was lying. She used the lie to defend her husband and brother from murder charges for abducting Till from his great uncle's home beating him near to death, gouging out one of his eyes, shooting him in the head, and then dumping his body in a river. Prior to the murder of Emmett Till, Carolyn Bryant chased the boy around her shop with a gun. She then apparently informed her brother and husband, and they finished the job she started. I wonder if Brown Miller will update her feminist classic with this new information about how deadly false accusations of sexual malfeasance can be to men, 
Or will she continue to perpetrate the same narrative that led to Emmett Till's death and the acquittal of his murderers? Okay. Uh, this is... I, I need a minute to think about this one. Um, but this is a really... Uh, this is a really messed up story. And I guess at the end of the yeah. day, it's good the truth came out. Um, but, but uh, Jesus. Do you yeah, no, she, she's now? not going to update her shit. She's not. If she does, she's going to update it with the fact that this woman had that, you made that fake charge being, you know, evidence. She'll, she'll call it evidence that, uh, you know, that there was such an environment of this going on already that, that it was believable because it was, it was true in other places. That's what she'll do. She you mean won't, alternative facts? Yeah, she, she won't admit that it was just a lie. And I, that's, that's par for the course with, with feminist advocates, uh, activism, I should say. Um, this is, Brown Miller was one of the, the feminists who lied to Congress in, I believe, 1978 uh, about the dynamics of violence against women um, and, and, and violence against men by women. Yep, it was 1978 during hearings before the House of Representatives Subcommittee on Select Education, 95th Congress, second session on H.R. 7927 and 8948. Uh, and I have a 400 plus page PDF document that, it, that, that has the entire hearing in it. They showed up and they lied about the do dynamics of domestic violence in a push for gendered federal law. They were pushing for the Violence Against Women Act that didn't get passed until 1994. Something prior to it uh, got, got, um, got through and, and, and it wasn't gendered and they continued to push after that. But Susan Brown Miller was one of the women who uh, whose who's, uh, testimony um, and whose who's, uh, writing was used in that. And, like, it was on, on page 67 of the file or page 60 of the document, her, her book is quoted. It says, society's treatment of women throughout history has never been one we can be proud of. And that's from her, from her book, Against Our Will. You know, it's as the first permanent acquisition of man, his first piece of real property, woman was in fact the original building block, the cornerstone of the house of the father, man's forcible extension of his boundaries to his mate and later their offspring was the beginning of his concept, concept of ownership. And this is the kind of thought that Brown Miller bases everything that she says on. Because of that, she's never going to admit that that Till was completely innocent and that the woman lied. There will always in her mind be some reason why he deserved it and some reason why men in general were at fault for what happened to him and not the people who hurt him, not the people who killed him, tortured him to death. They're not guilty to her, only masculinity. There's another thing too that they left out um, the woman who uh, made the accusation, uh, Bryant, I believe her name is, she actually chased Till with a gun before getting her brother and husband to finish the job. But the story leaves that part out. Yeah. So, just well, you know what over. you know what's really troubling about this too, and we kind of we kind of see it in um, in what happened with Gamergate to a certain extent. Uh, how a lie has a butterfly effect. Um, granted, this particular butter, butterfly effect was not, did not have the benefit of modern social media to help it propagate, but you know it's just something that happened over time. Uh, the problem with this is that this lie, we 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 can't measure the damage that this one incident did, because. Uh, I mean, well, maybe you can. I mean, it, it would take a lot of fucking effort to figure it all out. But this lie has probably you know, has probably led to a lot of a lot of justified violence towards other people. You mm -hmm. know, I mean, is that making am I making sense here? I'm sorry if I'm being a little bit unclear, but uh, I, I feel like when when situations like this come up um, and people accept it, it becomes acceptable. It 
this kind of thing just spreads out. It's like, oh, well, they did this there, and that was that was the rule of the day. It's kind of like, um, like I was telling you earlier in the chat. It's like we were talking about lynchings, and uh, when I used to I used to work for a gallery, and we had a contract with the Virginia State government where we worked in the actual the Virginia State archives, and we did document preservation, and uh, you could you could look through all these photographs of lynchings where entire towns would come out and they'd have picnics and their mm -hmm. kids are there and they take pictures with the fucking corpses that were hanging in the trees. And this stuff becomes normalized because it becomes acceptable because, Oh, well it was acceptable, acceptable in this case. So it must be acceptable in this other case and so on and so on and so on. And so I, I when I see things like this, it, I, I have to imagine the damage that was spawned of this is immeasurable. Mm -hmm. Uh, because, you know, obviously, I don't, I don't think you can quantify it in any easy way. But, like, in, and again, it's like, to relate it to modern things, like with Gamergate, it's like this, you know, the lies of these people that were, you know, seeking whatever, you know, be it Sarkeesian or Wu or, or Quinn, spiraled out of control in an enormous fashion and so quickly. Like, the whole Quinn thing, like, you know, you can go back and check her story and there's there's verifiable instances where you can show that she was fucking lying and making shit up and you know, this, that, and the other, but it's spun out of control. And I'm, I'm almost thankful that this didn't happen in modern time. Mm -hmm. um, or that we don't have the kind of society where this could have happened in modern time, I guess, because the, the, it seems like the damage that could possibly happen right now would just, just be astronomical. In nature i just i i can't even fathom the kind of nonsense well i mean i guess i can because you know the shit where the the guy got kidnapped by those those four kids and they put on social media i mean so i guess we're seeing things that are somewhat analogous to the this actually kind of think of it but yeah this is just i i, I it just boggles my mind when i think about this sort of thing yeah. It, yeah i think about this if those guys hadn't put that on social media do you think they would have been in as much trouble as they are now. Um, hmm. I would hope so. It's like but I. But when you're parading something like that around, though, like you were talking about earlier with the uh, with the women who did the thing, it's like they they were doing it as a trophy situation. So, yeah, yeah. So I think that that increases, you know, the outrage against that sort of action. So, see, I wonder if um, if they hadn't put that on social media, if they'd have been swept under the rug. And I, I also suspect Jody Arias, the reason that she wasn't really able to get away with what she did, I believe, was uh, that her claims were contradicted by the photos that she had presented as evidence. Um, those kind of gave away the fact that she was lying about everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I, I worry that if she had not had that photographic evidence that that contradicted her own story if she might have gotten away with what she did by claiming that she was doing it because she was abused because I've seen a woman get away with fracturing a man's skull and his wrist because she was afraid of him he was down on the floor in a fetal position with his his hands over his head which is why his his wrist was also fractured and she beat him with a glass paperweight from his own desk after breaking into his apartment and he was the one hauled off by the cops because she said he was big and scary and he was oh, big always. there wasn't a scary thing about him but he was big <laughs> you know well no um, he was a man that was that was yeah. his i mean it, you know but, yeah. and it like to to know that i i <sighs> I'm not ready to say that something like this couldn't happen in in today's society. Um, and uh, it's it's awful to say that, but it's we definitely have to be vigilant and uh, and and work hard to prevent that from being able to happen in today's society. And we kind of got to fight pretty hard against the the outlook that women like Brown Miller promote um i mean that's that's basically it's hard for me to say nope we're past that you know i i, I think we still have a ways to go 
Yeah, no, I don't. I don't think we're past that. I think we're. I think we're far from being past it. I think you know. And if anything is is proven, that is the current climate in, as far as race relationships and uh, politics go. Um, I think we're. Uh, you know, let's just let's just be real honest. Amer- uh, yeah. Racism is alive and well in America right now. It's it's not going away anytime soon. Um, so Although I, a- that said, I think being a minority race is probably not the the most likely reason why that would happen to somebody at this point well yeah there's we, a lot we more are parody that. that sort of disgusting behavior you know can happen to anybody but yeah yeah i think it's um this essentially what happened here we're, we're looking at the power of the accusation and especially when you take on top of that you add mob justice um, or people just vigilantes, you know, that, that don't uh, respect due process. And this is the, what you're going to get. And, you know, that the, these things, they can happen, yeah, to anyone. And, and we've seen it. So, um, I, you know what this is? This is old school white knighting. Like, in, in yeah. not even to put a pun to it, but this is, that's what it is, basically. Yeah, and I, so, and I mean, I, well, I was thinking... this to me, well, let's go get that damn darkie and show him a thing or two. Yeah, I mean, or, or whatever. So. I, I think that this sort of stuff's probably been going on for, you know, as long as we've had tribes and we were able to communicate oh, for with, sure. with language. We've had, you know, cases where, um, essentially, you have, you know, uh, Tribe A's woman, women are under threat from the men in Tribe B... And if any of those men get uppity with our women, we kill them. We basically right. because we that we are justified in doing so because the women are in danger. So yeah, that's why we have to make that's that's why we have to have that big push to make that not a reason to to attack each other. Mm-hmm. When we start recognizing female agency, we take away that threat narrative. Exactly. Um. Well, I don't know. Does anybody else have any thoughts? I know Cherry's been super quiet. Super quiet. I don't have any thoughts in particular, but uh, just, I don't know. I've interrupted Hannah enough in the first half. I'm just kind of letting her talk. <laughs> Aw. Well. You're a sweetheart. We're just acknowledging that you're still here. Um, I appreciate it. No, and also, like, I just have nothing to add. I'm sorry. I'm a piece of shit. I have nothing. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Thanks for drawing attention to it, Brian. <laughs> Your badge of cod is revoked. Be gone. <laughs> no, you you can flog him later in the back of flogging room. You can. Stay. It's, it's a lie that I have nothing to say. I just, you know, like better better minds than mine have have uh, expounded on some of these ideas uh, in particular. So you know, I definitely uh, would have spoken up if I had something burning to say. Okay. But uh, I appreciate it, Brian. But there is a burning in her heart, guys. It burns bright. You Very saw true. it. Not in my pants, but in my heart. Yeah, your heart, not your part. <laughs> <laughs> the fire correct here. We're good. Okay. <laughs> we should probably get going. Mike is also here. He should say hello because Jax is asking. Hi, Mike. All right, maybe he's not. But I see his icon, so he's just being least secretive. Um, he's here in spirit. He is. I swear to God. Look, here, I'll show you. Look, there he is. Okay. <laughs> um, so we should probably close it out and get ready to do the after show. We are going to look at uh, this story. Uh, where a woman makes an open apology to men, and uh, this it's it's good. We're gonna go on a little field trip. So if you guys want more uh, content, if you want to join us in the after show, please consider becoming a patron. www.patreon.com forward slash Honey Badger Radio. You know what to do. Help us grow and improve the show more and more. We're trying to do more new things, and the only way we can do that is with your help. So. Uh, thanks again to you guys, the watchers, the listeners, the listenators, the participants, the the trolls, the shit posters, all of you. Uh, without you, then uh, we wouldn't have anything to do. I seriously wouldn't have anything to do. My my life is very it's very empty. And I want to thank those of you guys who are uh, who joined me on the panel uh, for wasting your time hanging out with me. Oh, although I, I do know that the Polecat is actually one of the more popular shows that we have, so maybe I should kiss my own ass a little bit more, but I'm not going to do that. Um, and uh, thanks, Anna, Mike, Scott, Max, and Hannah for participating in the discussion. And also thanks to Allison, Mike, J, and Max, and Brian, myself, for doing the write-ups for the show. Uh, I think that's about it. I'm done with all the thank yous and all that, so... We'll see you guys on the next show um, for the Polecat. 
We'll see you next week. Thanks. Have a good